Hello guys and welcome to another calculus video. In this video we're going to be taking on this awesome integral that you can see right here on the screen. Um, this is taken from a math stack exchange post that I've kind of been using for a little while because it has a lot of really nice integrals on it. Um, it's not my favorite integral in the world because you can kind of tell that it was handmade and someone tried to make it more difficult. But you know once you see the the few little tricks that you have to do in order to evaluate this integral, it's really not that difficult. So let's go ahead and jump right into the integration. Now, before we start, I want to point out that the first main trick that we see here is something that uh, you should train your eyes to look for if you want to be good at solving integrals like this. And that's, we see this one minus cosine x in two different places. This makes us think that maybe it's something that we're going to substitute in later. But the other thing is that when you're integrating like from 0 to pi or 0 to pi over 2 and you're dealing with mostly trig related values, um, sine of x and cosine of x work really well together because you can sub u equals sine of x and u equals cosine of x or you can figure out a way um, using King's property to reason them out. But when you're integrating on larger scales, like for example from 0 to infinity, sine of x and cosine of x don't work very well together. And the reason for that is because in general, you can't substitute anything, you can't use King's property, you can't do most of the tricks that you can do in general with sine of x and cosine of x. The only exception is sometimes you can substitute like e to the ix or something like that. So in general, you're going to want to look for a way to combine these into one term so that all your trig is combined in one place. So the reason I point this out is because the first trick when it comes to this integral is actually something that looks a little bit odd, but you'll see in a moment we're going to substitute x equals 2 theta. And you're going to see why. Let's go ahead and substitute this in. So when we substitute x equals 2 theta, we're going to take out a 2 in the front, right? Uh, because dx equals 2 d theta. And then we're going to end up with 1 minus cosine of 2 theta on top. On the bottom, we're going to end up with 8 minus 8x sine of 2 theta, or sorry, I, this is an x, but this should be theta, plus 4 theta squared times 1 minus cosine of 2 theta. This is a really important substitution to remember when doing integrals like this, because now we have sine of 2 theta, which can be broken into sine of theta and cosine theta, and 1 minus cosine of 2 theta, which can be split into sine squared of uh, or not split into, can be converted into sine squared theta. So let's go ahead and do that right now. On the top, we're going to get 4 on top, integral from 0 to infinity, just from a 2 from this, so we're going to get sine squared of theta. And on the bottom, we can actually factor out 4 from all of this, so we can go ahead and cancel that, and we're going to get 2 minus 2 Actually, we're going to get a 4 here. 4 theta sine theta, cosine theta, that extra 2 just came from sine of 2 theta identity, plus, and then we're going to get another 2 here, 2 theta squared uh, sine squared of, two, of theta. And again, that 2 just came from the identity sine squared of theta equals 1 minus cosine of 2 theta. So that's the main trick to remember here is that whenever you see 1 minus cosine theta in several places and sine of theta in one place, chances are you're going to have to use half and double angle identities. So now we're going to go ahead and factor out another 2. So we're going to get 1 half times the integral from 0 to infinity of sine squared of theta over 1 minus 2 theta sine theta, cosine theta, plus theta squared, sine squared of theta. And hopefully you can already see the pattern here. We have this nice lineup of theta, sine theta, theta, sine theta, and then cosine theta right here. And we, we actually notice that if we take theta, sine theta, and then we go and we have a negative sign here, so we subtract cosine theta, and we square it, we're going to get theta squared sine squared of theta. Then we're going to get minus 
2 sine theta, theta 2 theta sine theta cosine theta plus cosine squared of theta. And you'll notice that this actually exactly lines up right here. The only difference is that here we have cosine squared of theta and here we have 1. So let's see what that's going to look like in terms of our actual integral. So the trick here is uh, we have this 1 and we have this cosine squared of theta, so we'll just rewrite that as sine squared of theta. And then we'll actually have a sine squared of theta on the top and bottom, so it's going to be best to just divide that out. So we're going to get 1 half times the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 over then on the inside of the parentheses here, that sine squared of theta is just going to be sine theta. So we're going to get theta minus cotangent of theta, all squared, plus 1 d theta. Now we know that theta is an odd function, cotangent theta is an odd function, so theta minus cotangent theta all squared is going to be an even function, which means that we can rewrite this as 1 fourth times the integral from negative infinity to infinity of 1 over uh, theta minus cotangent theta squared minus plus 1. And this is where Glasser's Master Theorem really, really is able to help us out. And the reason we have, we're able to use this powerful tool is because Glasser's Master Theorem states um, that integral from negative infinity to infinity of f of x dx equals integral from negative infinity infinity of f of phi of phi of x dx where phi of x equals x minus some sum of some uh, a i over x minus b i right uh, where a i is greater than zero or we can just take the absolute value right a i so it just means that we can subtract as many of these versions of whatever as we want. And luckily, cotangent theta can actually be written using the expansion for cotangent x uh, is the sum from negative infinity to infinity of 1 over x plus n pi. So you notice that if we let bi equal negative n pi and ai equal 1, and this sum actually matches up with this sum, which means that x minus cotangent x is an acceptable uh, form of phi of x. Also, I should note that this is all the principal value because some of these integrals won't converge. So in this case, we can have phi of x be x minus cotangent x, which means that this integral right here, of course, we have uh, theta rather than x, but it doesn't really matter. We're just going to have 1 fourth times the integral from negative infinity to infinity going this way, substituting in phi of x and replacing it with just x, which in this case, again, is theta, we just get 1 over theta squared plus 1 d theta. So when we integrate, we're going to get 1 fourth times inverse tangent of infinity minus inverse tangent of negative infinity, which overall is just going to give us pi over 4. So I hope you guys enjoyed this quick little video on a relatively simple problem. Once you see the trick with substituting that double angle, um, that's something that I want you guys to always look out for when you're doing integrals because um, it's a really easy way. Also, if you want to create an integral to make an integral much seem much harder is to just use that double angle identity as much as you can. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this nice, short and quick little video. And yeah, hope to see you next time.